Okay, let's have a go at creating an Azure function uh, in Visual Studio Code. It turns out that there is a really useful uh, doc which describes this um, in the quick start guide with inside uh, the Azure documentation at learn.microsoft.com. There isn't a, uh, a lot of support for Rust as a language, but we can use the custom handler functionality to enable Azure to just respond to any HTTP request. There's a bunch of setup we need to do. We need a, an Azure account. We need Visual Studio Code, da 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 da, da. Uh, And so we then start to get uh, some instructions and we need to create a resource. And so uh, on my side, on the left here, I can go into the Azure button and open up and then I click create function. I've got a, uh, uh, I need to choose the directory. So I'll just see if I can create one and I'm gonna call it zap because that sounds like a neat name. And I can choose different languages. I'm gonna go for custom handler and HTTP trigger and provide the function name and it will be, I'm just gonna call it HTTP zap. A function anonymous admin authorization, we want anonymous, which will enable anyone to call this function. We then get a bunch of uh, template created for us. And so the next question or the next step is to create and build it. Uh, we go into a terminal and then I run cargo, init, name, open in the function app root, the same folder of host.json. So I'll just see where I am now. If I go into zap, I've got host.json there. I say cargo, init, name, handler, which is my Rust code. And then in the cargo.toml file, it says that we should include the warp uh, framework as well as Tokyo, which is a the async runtime. Uh, RT runtime macros make things a little bit simpler, and RT multi-threaded make use of make means that we can make use of all of our cores. Uh, Cargo.toml file is Rust's uh, dependency um, uh, metadata format, and then in, sus, uh, in source slash main dot rs. I'll just go into here with inside the source main. And I'm just going to copy and paste this directly. Uh, it's a little bit unclear to read at the moment because I've got a, um, a lot going on in the screen, but we have some sort of state uh, and we are mapping I think names to um, two things. Otherwise, well, we've got API example, and uh, let's call this. So we ah yeah okay. So we get a name, and then we find um, uh, and uh, if we don't have one, we 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 have like a gener generic message. Okay, sorry. Cool, okay, so now we build and then uh, release. So I can um, run the build command. So this will take a while to work. I need to go and download a lot of data. Uh, but hopefully, so I've got 133 crates to download and compile. Then once that works, so let's go back to looking at how this function actually operates. Um, warp uh, is creating a path. So I've got API and then HTTP example. If we change this path, let's say to greet, it will uh, change the URL parameters that are um, specified anyway. So I've um, gone and built my code. I'll just change it so that uh, recompiles it with the new handler. And I now need to move the handler, so cargo, the 
function that invokes the Rust compiler, it's sort of a package manager, has put a file called handler, or if you're in Windows, handler.exe, in this target slash release directory. And we need to move it into the root of the package that has host.json. And now we can wire things together. Okay, so I need to open up, it says here, configure your function app, open host.json. Okay. Uh, in the custom handler description section, set the value of direct default executable path to handler. Okay. In the custom handler section, uh, add a property named enable fort porting. To set that to true, confirm the custom handler looks a little bit like this. Okay, our one looks just slightly different because our, we put the one the other thing at the top. Um, okay, I'll we'll make it a little bit more uh, so it just looks exactly the same. Now we can run the function locally. Uh, this func command is created from, uh, it's actually in part of the requirements that came um, uh, it was a part of those um, requirements that were, oops, that's not right. It was one of the dependencies that we were asked to install right at the start. Oh gosh, selected the wrong thing. Copy. That's not a real command. Ah, okay, so it, it we got an HTTP success, which is almost useful. Now, I want to be able to say API greet. Nothing. Ah, I wonder if I need to say name equals Tim. Maybe I will take this back and say, stop touching it before it actually works. Oh gosh, I've just gone and deleted my code. Ah, uh, wait, 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 wait. Hmm. That's not very satisfactory. I What's going on here? I'll, first I'll fix this again. And we will try to, that won't work. That's not working either. I wonder if I need to go and define something else. So, I wonder if this actually needs to be HTTP zap. And closed it down, clear, and then I'm going to recompile. And reload. So copy it back into the root, and then func start, and then it's setting itself up. And sort of said that there's this HTTP zap thing. Aha! Hello, Tim. This HTTP triggered. Uh, okay. So if I don't play with the with the example code, it works fine. <laughs> Oops. Okay. There we go, there we have it. We have created our first uh, function, actually relatively simply. So that was cool. 
and <laughs> sorry about the uh, the problems that I encountered. The uh, there is actually a whole bunch of extra documentation for getting things configured and working uh, inside Azure to be able to um, enable anyone on the internet to access your function in essentially an uh, infinitely scalable way, or I suppose virtually infl infinite or um, as big as the cloud, <laughs> as big as Azure um, can go. Okay, cheers, bye.